Hello, everyone. It's your favorite Ducatista, your bald-headed dude, survivor of the cube, Yammy Noob. Okay, actually, as you can probably tell, I'm not Yammy Noob. That's because Yammy is traveling and didn't think through his schedule very well and couldn't be bothered to record before hitting the road to Italy for the Eichma show. My name is Jeremy. I need a nickname. I'm gonna go with Jammy J. Can one give oneself a nickname? I'm a squid in training under Yammy Noob's illustrious and wonderful wing of Daytona slaying destruction. Today, I'm going to discuss some of the unspoken things of motorcycling. Some of these things will be more obvious than others, but in the end, they're more thought about than talked about. If you tried explaining half these things to normies, they'd probably think you're crazy. Before we jump in, though, you gotta know about these motorcycles we're giving away. We've got a fantastic Honda CB650R, a Kawasaki Ninja 400, and a Suzuki DRZ400. Why are we giving them away? Well, we've got the whole beginner bike giveaway series going on, powered by the good folks over on Patreon. But as we move away from Patreon and onto our own website, we're taking pre-registration. So if you want first chance to sign up and get started to win these motorcycles, hit the link below and you'll be pre-registered to win. What does that mean? It means you're going to get an email on November 17th with a link to go and sign up. Rumor has it you'll also get a cheeky discount code on merch and all kinds of other cool perks. So hit the link below to sign up and you'll be notified immediately when we launch. Best of luck. Now let's take a look at some of these things that no one tells you about riding motorcycles. It's a gateway hobby. One of the best things about motorcycling is that it opens our minds to new ideas and concepts. This can also be bad. If you started riding on a sport bike, you might run into some Grom owners or some supermoto riders and suddenly feel an itch to do something different. Like other hobbies, your first bike becomes a gateway for more bikes and different experiences. If you absolutely hate cruisers, I don't blame you. But a lot of cruiser riders do it because of the comfort. Crotch rockets are not the most comfortable bikes to ride for longer distances. If you've never been in the dirt, you're really missing out. When you have the chance to ride someone else's dirt bike, sumo, cruiser, or anything else outside your current bike, it's going to create a different feeling of yearning. The idea of you becoming a street Rossi will fade as you consider getting a sumo just to pop some dank nooners and rip through some trails. There will be a time when your first bike isn't enough. You will search for the next best thing. The lingo. Just like anything else that you start, motorcycling has its fair share of language and lingo that normies just won't understand. Squid, nooner, wheelie, atgat, high-vis, sumo, clutch-up, naked, stretched, leaned over, drag knee, counter, steer, the list goes on. A lot of normies don't get the words that you will be spewing from your mouth after you buy your bike, and that's okay. Be prepared to explain everything to everyone. You can't tell someone you were dragging knee unless you explain leaning is how motorcycles corner, and so on. We have a very unique language, which we love and use all the time. If you need practice, just go to your local bike shop. They use it there too. Trust me. The weather. When it comes to riding, you'll notice yourself checking the weather religiously the night before you ride. It might be the deciding factor even, if you're a fair weather rider. A weather rock simply won't do anymore. Some riders are down to ride in the rain, while others are just too much of a squid and don't want to get pelted with rain at 80 miles an hour. If you didn't know, when you ride in the rain without gear, it hurts. A lot. Speeds over 35 miles an hour are unheard of because the rain will sting that bad without any gear. For everyone else, the weather dictates a lot of different things. It determines the gear we're going to wear, where we will ride, and it also determines whether we even get to ride or not. Rain is one thing, but gusts of extreme wind, that'll knock you over. When it comes to gear, riders will have half a closet just for riding. Yeah, you might know a rider that wears only two t-shirts, but they probably have an endless collection of jackets, shirts, vests, and boots for their motorcycle. Some riders have more helmets than underwear. Kidding. Not. Gear is important because it's difficult for us to have a one-jacket-fits-all kind of thing. There will be times when your go-to jacket is still too heavy for the summer, or your insulated jacket isn't warm enough in the winter and you need another one. The same with gloves. 
Summer gloves are vented and have breathable fabric, while winter gloves will be insulated and keep your hands warm in the coldest temperatures. What you might never consider in a car because you have heat and AC will be a large impact on your motorcycling. Say hello to the weather. It owns you and your bike now. The cost. You shouldn't be surprised at this, but a bike is gonna cost you more than you think. What starts off as a couple hundred bucks for the basic rider course and a helmet will lead you down the path to poverty. $500 jacket, $300 Bluetooth, $400 pair of boots, no problem. That's just for gear. If you really enjoy riding, bikes can go from $5,000 to $40,000 really quick. If you're trying to do this on a budget, the cost of maintenance or fixing up a bike might break the bank as well. Maintenance intervals on a bike are about one-third of that for a car. Tires get replaced as soon as 5,000 miles or last as long as 15,000 miles. Tune-ups can be needed every riding season. The oil change is probably the only thing on par with cars, but it pretty much has to be full synthetic, and it's not something you want to skimp on. The cost of bikes, ownership, and being protected adds up really fast. If you're considering a bike, budget 10% more than what you think because things will come up. Cars don't need maintenance every week or month, but with bikes, you never know. A kickstand spring might last you only two years. Your handlebar ends could fall off, and then there will be other costs with a bike as well. Estimate the costs for inspection, registration, insurance, and anything else you can think of so the costs don't seem endless when you buy a bike. Prepare yourself to have at least a helmet, gloves, and a jacket while wearing boots at minimal. Get a decent bike to start with, not an early 2000s leader bike with 50,000 miles on it. It's honestly better to be a new rider or moderately experienced rider on a brand new bike than it is to be on a bigger used bike. The addiction. As excited as motorcycling gets people, it is an addiction. It doesn't matter what part of riding you're addicted to, whether it's a leaned over in a corner, tearing through the gears in record time, or simply cruising around. We get it. Motorcycling becomes an addiction, a kind of hunger that nothing will satisfy. The only thing that comes close is going to be twisting your wrist and holding on. As the addiction increases, so will your skill level. You will be in a constant state of mastering one skill, then becoming addicted to another. In your first day, you might be addicted to the acceleration, then to cornering, then to popping wheelies, then maybe your addiction will lead you off-road. Whatever it is, you'll never stay bored for long and will always find something else to be addicted to. We all had to learn. You're not special, and you're no different than anyone else. I'm talking about learning and how we all had to do it. No matter how smooth another rider looks or how flawless someone is on their bike, they too had to learn at some point. There was a time when Valentino Rossi did not know how to ride a motorcycle, and it was in the womb before his arms and legs grew. We were all complete noobs that stalled, dropped bikes, and almost rode into something from target fixation. We all endured the same learning curve that you will. It's not always comfortable. Motorcycling is a great hobby. The open wind blowing on your body, the smell of fresh air, the relaxing feeling of leaving all your worries behind and riding into the great yonder. The sweat in your ass crack, how tight your helmet feels, and the fact that your butt hurts from sitting on such an oddly shaped seat. This is riding. It's not always comfortable, but we do it anyways. In the summertime, we battle swamp ass, Gucci sploochy, and for the ladies, maybe even sweaty boobs? I don't know. We feel sweat drip down our faces as we ride. Our hands get numb and drenched, but we grin and we bear it. It is still riding, and we love it. For the crazies out there that ride in colder weather, frozen fingers and toes, crisp air when you open your helmet visor, and having to shift a cold bike under multiple layers are just some of the struggles that you might have. Crotch rockets are awesome, but the positioning isn't ideal for someone with joint pain or back pain. We do it anyways because we love it. It just isn't comfortable. We all get scared. Do you remember the first time that you went wide open throttle on your bike? If it was a 600cc sport bike or larger, it probably scared the crap out of you. How about when you cornered and leaned over just a little farther than normal? Maybe you rubbed your pegs on the road? Any rider who says they are never scared is simply lying. We do what we love, but sometimes it will scare the daylights out of us. We want to be as safe as possible while we're doing hood rat stuff. 
But sometimes when we low side, drop a bike, or go a little too fast, it scares us back into reality. We are still riding two-wheeled death machines and our lives are always at risk when we ride. It's about loneliness. If you feel pressured and want to practice alone during the MSF course, you're not the only one. Motorcycle riding is a very lonely hobby at times. You don't always need or want a riding buddy. Sometimes you just want to go it alone. And that's fine. A lot of your riding experience should be done while riding solo. Find that parking lot late at night. Start practicing everything you can think of. Go on those long trips by yourself and become more confident in your riding abilities. Motorcycles were designed with the rider, not passenger, in mind. So you enjoy the freedom that riding gives. You don't always have to attend group rides or hang out with the other riders. Sometimes you need to ride just for yourself. Teach yourself to corner harder and faster. Teach yourself to pop mega dank nooners, all within the comfort of being by yourself. Don't feel peer pressure to learn how to do something on your bike that makes you feel uncomfortable. Okay, that's all for today's video. Is there something else that no one told you before you started riding? Let me know in the comments. I know I wished that someone had made a video like this when I started to ride because it would have saved me loads of trouble. Also, don't forget about our motorcycle giveaway. You'll be doing yourself a disservice by not signing up to at least get notified of when we launch on November 17th. So hit that button and get yourself first in line and earn cool discount codes and perks for signing up early. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one. Fact. In Switzerland, it is illegal to own just one guinea pig. This is because they are social animals and it is considered abuse to leave them alone. Goodbye.